Hi, it's Katrina. The sunken city. Researchers discovered a strange group of pyramid-like structures off the coast of Cuba. These structures were found at the bottom of the ocean, identified using sonar equipment. They appear to be megaliths, things that would normally be found at a site on land like Stonehenge or Gobekli Tepe in Turkey. These structures are roughly 1,200 feet long and 120 feet high. They've been estimated at 6,000 years old. They don't look like anything ever found in Cuba and are more reminiscent of the pyramids and temples in Belize or Mexico. This discovery should have been international news when it was made just a couple of years ago. But ever since it was first mentioned, it hasn't come up again. There is much debate as to whether this find was even real, even though the structures look very clear. No teams have gone underwater to check out the mysterious sunken city, and no mainstream archaeologists will even talk about it. This has led some to speculate that the ancient city could change history, and that for some reason, the discovery is being suppressed. On the other hand, it could be nothing more than natural geological formations. They certainly look like pyramids, temples, and other buildings, but there is a chance they are just rocks, and their shapes are coincidental. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. The USS Jacob Jones In 2022, divers uncovered the USS Jacob Jones, a U.S. Navy destroyer which was annihilated by an enemy submarine over 100 years ago in 1917. It's famous for being the first American destroyer ever lost in combat. It was divers from the British Sub Aqua Club who uncovered its remains while searching for mysterious wrecks along the coastline of the UK. The USS Jacob Jones had originally been hit by a German torpedo during World War I. It was an early prototype for the destroyer class, which is currently the backbone of the US Navy. The wreckage was found 40 miles from the southwest tip of the UK, submerged 377 feet underwater. But before it was destroyed, the ship was a force to be reckoned with. It had four 4 inch guns, eight 533 mm torpedo tubes, and a pair of steam turbines delivering 17,000 shaft horsepower. After America entered into World War I, the USS Jacob Jones was given convoy duty. Its main task was to deliver troops and supplies from North America to Europe to fight against the Germans. During her brief career, she rescued hundreds of Allied merchantmen who had been left stranded by enemy activity. But then, on the night of December 6, 1917, she was hit by a torpedo. 64 crew members died, and the ship was lost until just recently. Mysterious Holes Explorers have discovered some extremely unusual holes on the ocean floor. They have been called alien holes, and no one has any idea who made them or what purpose they serve. The holes are perfectly aligned, looking like they were purposely punched into the sea floor 1.6 miles beneath the surface. They were uncovered by a crew with the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration as they explored a vast section of the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. This is part of the largest mountain range in the world, and a place that hasn't been investigated too much in the past. Well, let's get back to the holes. They are extremely bizarre, and some say they were clearly made by some intelligent life form. The holes are perfectly straight, and as you may know, Mother Nature doesn't typically work in straight lines. She also doesn't work with repeating distances, but each hole is the exact same distance from the last. They appear to have been measured and placed with great care, and each one is surrounded by a small mound of sediment. But this is where things get even weirder. The same phenomenon was spotted in 2004 by the U.S. National Marine Fishery Service. They found a very similar pattern of holes and couldn't figure out what had made them. It doesn't look like it was an organism because scientists have never seen a creature make something like this before. Researchers and scientists across the world are stumped. Some have theorized the holes could have been made by cracks in the sea floor, some say escaping gas, and some have even suggested it was an underwater vehicle searching for treasure. And then of course there are the stranger theories. Some say the holes are evidence of alien activity leftover marks from whatever the aliens were doing in secret at the bottom of the ocean. Dino Track Texas is historically hot and dry. Amid the great drought happening right now, the Paluxy River in the Dinosaur Valley State Park has lost most of its water. The river dried up completely in some locations. 
but according to the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department, the vanishing water revealed prehistoric dinosaur tracks from 113 million years ago. Under normal conditions, the tracks would have been totally submerged and filled with mucky sediment. Nobody ever would have found them. But now that the river is dry and the sediment has blown away in the wind, the tracks have been revealed as if they were left only yesterday. Paleontologists say the dinosaur footprints were left behind by an Acrocanthosaurus. This was a beastly carnivore that stood 15 feet tall and weighed roughly 7 tons. It was one of the most terrifying dinosaurs to ever roam prehistoric Texas, feasting on anything that moved. It's shout out time! Want to say a big thank you to Robert Nolan and Crohn's Warrior for supporting this channel. If you are new here, welcome! And be sure to subscribe to join the Origins Explained family. The World's Deepest Shipwreck The deepest shipwreck in the world has just been found in an impossible depth in the Philippines. The ship is a U.S. destroyer that sank in World War II. It was found at a dizzying depth of 4 miles below the surface, or approximately 22,916 feet. That's a little over half as deep as the Mariana Trench. To give you an idea of just how insanely deep the ship was, only about 2% of the oceans are deeper than 23,000 feet. The ship is called the USS Samuel B. Roberts, or Sammy B for short. The Navy confirmed its discovery in a statement in June of 2022, although it was a company from the UK that made the discovery. Former Naval Commander Victor Vescovo and the team with EOS Expeditions found the ship broken in half at the bottom of the ocean. Sammy B was commissioned in 1944 and sunk the same year by Japanese naval forces during the brutal Battle of Samar. The American naval force was heavily outnumbered by the Japanese, and yet they successfully defended against a major attack. The Sammy B even damaged the superior Japanese fleet, which consisted of four huge battleships, six heavy cruisers, 11 destroyers, and the most heavily armed battleship ever constructed, the Yamato. But although the Sami B fought bravely, it took a hard hit from the Yamato and went down, taking 89 brave soldiers with it. The 120 soldiers who survived were forced to cling to scraps of the wreckage for nearly 50 hours before they were rescued. Huge Hydrothermal Vents Deep in the Pacific Ocean, scientists have discovered a series of hydrothermal vents. These vents are positively huge, covering an area about the size of a football field. They look like craggy underwater chimneys, rocky towers about 40 feet tall each. To make them even more chimney-like, the hydrothermal vents spew out black, smoky water that can reach temperatures of up to 694 degrees Fahrenheit. That water is so hot it would burn the flesh right off your bones. You wouldn't even be able to get near this thing because it would be like standing in the mouth of a volcano when it erupted. Scientists believe the water is even hotter inside the vent, possibly 818 degrees Fahrenheit, before it shoots out of the formation. But it's not the hydrothermal vents themselves that are so scary. Researchers from the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute in Massachusetts say the extremely hot temperature of the water suggests something terrifying. A volcanic eruption could be on the horizon, probably in the next few years. The newly discovered field of hydrothermal vents is about 200 miles from the coast of Mexico in the Pacific Ocean. The field is also part of the East Pacific Rise, a group of potentially world-destroying volcanoes extending from California to Antarctica. The vents are so hot, it suggests that something deep beneath the ground is happening, perhaps an accumulation of energy that will lead to a biblical-sized volcanic eruption. If this chain of volcanoes starts going off, it could, theoretically, bring about the end of humanity. The Head of Hercules Archaeologists have just discovered the head of Hercules. It wasn't a real human skull, but a stone head that belonged to a statue of one of history's most famous mythical heroes. It was discovered in a Roman shipwreck that sank near the Greek island Antikythera, located in the southern Aegean Sea. It went down in the first part of the first century BC. But this was hardly the first discovery made at the site. This shipwreck was initially found 100 years ago. Researchers have already brought an unbelievable wealth of treasure to the surface. 
But it was only recently that researchers began finding even more artifacts. They realized that an earthquake had occurred sometime after the ship sank, causing huge boulders to tumble onto the wreckage. Only once a team started removing the boulders did they find even more treasure. They had to use underwater lifting equipment, pressurized airbags, and all the ingenuity they had to move the boulders. Some of them weighed nearly 10 tons. But with the huge rocks removed, they found more artifacts, the most stunning being Hercules' preserved marble head, the gummy squirrel. A strange creature was recently found down in the depths of a deep sea abyss. Researchers are calling it a gummy squirrel, and they say it looks like a moldy, half-peeled banana. Scientists with the Natural History Museum in London found a menagerie of bizarre marine life in the Pacific Ocean. Among their discoveries were dozens of creatures that might be species totally unknown to science. In the summer of 2018, a remotely operated vehicle was sent to search through an abyss 16,400 feet beneath the surface. The abyss is located somewhere between Hawaii and Mexico and contains all manner of odd monsters. The team managed to recover 55 specimens, with 39 of them appearing to be totally new species. According to biologist Guadalupe Bribiesca Contreras, the last group to explore the area was 150 years ago on the HMS Challenger. Since then, this part of the ocean has barely been touched. It's no surprise they found so many wacky new animals. The so-called gummy squirrel appears to be a type of sea cucumber shaped like a banana. It was nearly two feet long, about the size of a child's arm. They also found a new kind of sea sponge that looks exactly like an underwater tulip. Unfortunately, the team didn't find any gigantic monsters, no new species of shark or terrifying fish with fangs. But this is a dark and mysterious part of the ocean, a place so deep there is no light and very little nutrition. It's possible that with additional expeditions, researchers will find even more bizarre creatures. Spanish Stonehenge In summer of 2022, a severe drought revealed something unbelievable in Spain. In 1963, the prehistoric site of what archaeologists nicknamed the Spanish Stonehenge was flooded. The government needed to create a new reservoir as part of a civil engineering project. And so, one of the most impressive archaeological marvels in all of Spain was flooded and gone. It remained submerged until now. The site was originally found in 1926 by the German archaeologist Hugo Obermeier. He was able to help identify the prehistoric circle as being 7,000 years old. It's an ancient megalith even older than Stonehenge, consisting of 100 standing stones. Nobody knows if the monument was used for ritualistic activity, if it was an extravagant tomb for a prehistoric chief, or if it was built to commemorate some great event. What we do know is that Europe is in its worst drought in 500 years, and the reservoir is nearly empty. With the water gone, the monument has been revealed once again. Sadly, the prehistoric site has taken a beating by being underwater for so long. Most of these stones have fallen over and shattered, and once the water in the reservoir rises again and the stones are submerged once more, it will probably be damaged even further. Ancient Greek Shipwreck Researchers with the European Institute for Underwater Archaeology recently announced the discovery of a shipwreck filled to the brim with treasure from the Ptolemaic era over 2,000 years ago. It was found in the Bay of Abu Kir, off the coast of Alexandria in Egypt. It's believed that the ship likely sank after it was hit by giant blocks of stone when the Temple of Amun was destroyed. Frank Gaudio, the president of the IEASM, says the temple was ruined during a major natural disaster in the 2nd century BC. As the temple crumbled to pieces, one of those pieces fell onto the ship, which had been moored in a canal right beside it. The ship then sank, was covered in blocks of rubble, and remained hidden for about 2,200 years. The blocks pinned the wreck to the bottom of the canal, and it was slowly covered over by about 15 feet of sediment. The Greek shipwreck isn't the only thing sitting at the bottom of the Bay of Abu Kir. The bay was once the home of a great port city named Heraklion, 
Researchers believe this was the very city where Cleopatra had her temple in the days before Egypt was taken over by the Romans. Something happened in the second century, perhaps a tsunami caused by an earthquake. Whatever it was, the entire city of Heraklion tumbled into the water. Ships, temples, and city streets were suddenly submerged. Sunken Maya City There is a fascinating and yet haunting place at the bottom of Central America's deepest lake. An international team of scientists with help from Mexico's National Anthropology and History Museum recently explored, mapped, and photographed the remnants of a lost Maya city called Samabaj. And it was no easy feat. The scientists had to dive 55 feet beneath Lake Atitlan, high up in the mountains of Guatemala. The mysterious sunken city of Samabaj was built by the Maya sometime around 400 BC. It then lasted for at least 650 years until 250 AD, when something unimaginable happened. The city was totally developed, densely populated, and filled with all the amenities the Maya had come to expect in their major centers. It had temples, domestic dwellings, great square plazas for gathering, and all on the shores of the greatest lake in the region. Well, kind of on the shores of the lake. The city wasn't actually built at the very edge of Lake Atitlan since not even the Maya were crazy enough to do that. Instead, they built the city on an island inside the crater of the dead volcano, with its last major eruption being roughly 84,000 years ago. Shortly after they built the city, there was some kind of volcanic disturbance that caused the lake bed to shift and push the water level up dramatically. In a very short time, the city of Samabach went from being a floating island to being at the bottom of the lake. It was abandoned forever and only discovered recently by archaeologists looking to explore its secrets. Cleopatra's Sphinx Frank Gaudio is a French marine archaeologist, arguably the most famous marine archaeologist in the world. He is responsible for discovering the lost city of Heraklion that sunk off the coast of Egypt in 1999. Well, he didn't technically discover it, but he was the first to explore it. It was actually a commander with the Royal Air Force who first witnessed the ruins under the water back in 1933. However, nobody really had the technology or the desire to start exploring underwater ruins until 1999. Once they did start exploring, everything they found was fantastic. In fact, one of the very first things that Frank lifted out of the water near the sunken city was a gigantic granite sphinx. And not just any granite sphinx either, but one with the head of Cleopatra's father. As you may recall, Cleopatra was the very last ruler of Egypt before her death in 30 BC and Egypt's ultimate submission to Rome. Cleopatra's father was the great ruler Ptolemy XII, and they both had lavish apartments right here off the coast of Alexandria. Heraklion was a kind of island city floating in Abu Kir Bay off the coast of Alexandria, likely a place where royals and wealthy folks lived. But after Cleopatra's death, the city was shaken by earthquakes, hit with tsunamis, and then drowned because of the rising sea level. By the second century BC, all of Heraklion had been swallowed by the bay as the soil liquefied. The Wreckage of the Yamato One of the most spectacular discoveries ever made in the water happened back in 1985. It was actually the summer of that year when a salvage team announced the discovery of a fantastic wreckage in the East China Sea. They came across the remains of what was the biggest Japanese battleship in all of World War II. It was called the Yamato and it sank while fighting a desperate battle to turn the tides of war in the favor of the Japanese. When it was discovered, the Yamato was in pretty rough shape. The Japan Broadcasting Corporation televised images of twisted metal, the calibers of massive guns, and the rapidly disintegrating hull. In its prime, the Yamato was an absolute beast of engineering. It was 72,800 tons, the biggest ever built for its day. It was meant to be unsinkable, but lasted for five years. It launched on August 9, 1940 and could shell an enemy at 25 miles away with its nine guns. Its sister ship, the Musashi, was sunk by U.S. carrier planes at the Battle of Leyte Gulf in 1944, and then the Yamato was destroyed at the Battle of Okinawa in April of 1945. Out of over 3,300 crew on board, only 260 survived the horrific onslaught. These days, there is very little left of Yamato's glory. 
Because it was blown apart so effectively, its pieces were scattered across the sea floor. It looks more like a section of some underwater scrapyard than the remains of one of the most powerful ships that ever sailed the seas. The Java Sea Shipwreck The Java Sea Shipwreck was found off the coast of Indonesia back in 1996 by some fishermen. The wreckage is 800 years old and still being studied to this day as one of the most important Southeast Asian wreckage sites that exist. The ship sank near the end of the 13th century off the west coast of Sumatra in the open sea. It's currently at the bottom of a major shipping lane, one that's been used since the earliest days of commercial trade in Asia. How in the world did this gigantic ship, over 90 feet long, become a pile of broken timbers on the bottom of the sea? Researchers believe it could have been overwhelmed by a storm. According to UNESCO, the ship was never covered over with any kind of sediment, and so it suffered massive biological degeneration. Nothing remains except a handful of timber fragments and some of its cargo. But the ship's cargo is actually the best part. After a lot of dives down to the shipwreck, researchers have identified Chinese iron and ceramics, wares from Thailand, products from Sumatra, and a total of over 100,000 ceramic objects. The ship was most likely sailing from Indonesia to China and making stops along the way to drop off and pick things up, only to be attacked by a storm and sunk. The Rare Phantom Jellyfish Scientists off the coast of California recently captured remarkable footage of an insanely rare jellyfish. The jellyfish is a massive and yet somehow almost impossible creature to spot. It was first identified back in 1899 and has only been filmed approximately nine times since then. Out of the thousands upon thousands of dives done by professional scientists in Monterey Bay, it's almost never been seen. The super rare phantom jellyfish is a deep sea jellyfish that lives between 3,200 and 21,900 feet deep. This is a place called the Twilight Zone, where very little light reaches the creatures who live in it. For this reason, the animals have developed all kinds of bizarre traits. Many of them are eyeless, some use bioluminescence to see, and others use the darkness to their advantage to slip around stealthily. It can grow to about 32 feet long and has a gigantic bell on its top nearly 3.5 feet in width. The creature is kind of bizarre because it doesn't have tentacles like an octopus, instead using four long arms that almost look like torn curtain drapes. Scientists aren't even sure how these things hunt. Would you rather discover a new aquatic species while scuba diving or stumble across the ruins of an undiscovered ancient civilization? Let me know in the comments below. And while you're at it, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. We've got lots of videos coming up. Real Life Lake Monster In Vermont's Lake Champlain, a very real prehistoric lake monster was just discovered washed up on shore. The monster is a gigantic sturgeon, a species that was previously declared endangered by the state. According to Chet McKenzie, a fisheries biologist with the Vermont Department of Fish and Wildlife, the sturgeon was nearly seven feet long. The size of the fish makes it one of the biggest sturgeon ever to be seen in modern times. That's pretty impressive for Lake Champlain, especially when you know more about this spectacular marine monster. The sturgeon has been living on Earth since the days of the dinosaurs. They have armored scales, are practically indestructible, and have adapted very well to living at the bottom of lakes. They are actually considered bottom feeders and hang out by themselves slurping up gunk and slime and whatever else they can find in the muck. Unfortunately for the sturgeon, they were considered a nuisance by commercial fishermen for the past century or two, and because of that, they were widely and indiscriminately slaughtered and now there aren't very many of them left. So finding such gigantic sturgeon somewhere like Lake Champlain is actually quite a big deal and could mean their numbers are finally recovering. Sunken Egyptian Fortress In the old kingdom of Egypt, Sneferu, who's believed to be the founding father of the fourth dynasty, founded the city of Buhen. It started its life as a small trading post and then was abandoned 200 years later. The city was little more than a blip on historical radar. It wouldn't be until the 12th dynasty that Senusret III went on several military campaigns against the Nubians to the south and the Kingdom of Kush. To maintain military superiority, Senusret III built a series of fortifications along the Nile. 
One of them was built in the abandoned settlement of Buhen. It was then the northernmost fortress in the chain, at the very edge of the Nile's bank. Its main purpose was to protect the commercial shipping moving in and out of the region from the rebel Nubians. A small town formed within its huge walls. The city was protected by over a thousand soldiers and trained archers, and even the great queen Hatshepsut built a temple within the fortress dedicated to the god Horus. Even through the years, Buhen remained a powerful fortress and imposing symbol of Egyptian military might. This is where things get a little strange. When it comes to sunken cities, most of them sank a long time ago. But in the case of Buhen, we watched it happen in real time. When the Aswan High Dam was constructed in 1958, UNESCO sounded the warning bells that many historical monuments and places would be submerged. There ended up being a huge international effort to move archaeological treasures out of the area. The Temple of Horus was completely dismantled and is currently in the National Museum of Sudan. But Buhen itself is gone, totally submerged as of 1964, sitting at the bottom of Lake Nasser. The Orient The French ship The Orient boasted an impressive 118 guns and was the flagship of the French fleet way back in 1798. It was the lead vessel during the Battle of the Nile, when the British Royal Navy fought against the French Republic in Egypt. This battle was immensely important to history, as it involved Napoleon Bonaparte essentially trying to take over the world, and the British trying to stop him. Luckily, the British came out victorious, and Napoleon's defeat in Egypt in 1798 led directly to his humiliating defeat at the Siege of Acre in 1799. But let's get back to the boat, which was originally launched in 1791 under the name Dauphin Royal. She was renamed after the founding of the French First Republic the year after, fought at the Battle of Genoa in 1795, and later was renamed a third time by Napoleon Bonaparte himself, finally getting the name the Orient. In the end, the ship never made it out of Egypt. It was set on fire during the fighting and exploded in a great fireball before sinking into the water. And, surprise, surprise, 200 years later, almost exactly, the great French marine archaeologist Frank Gaudio discovered the site of the Orient. He and his team documented the wreckage for the first time in modern history, and even brought back old coins, small weapons, printing type from a printing press, and a bunch of random possessions from the crew members. Ancient Fishing Canoe In Wisconsin, a canoe was pulled out of the water, which was a pretty big deal considering the canoe is about 1,200 years old. For the first time since it was lost at the bottom of Lake Mendota, the artifact has finally seen the light of day. At Spring Harbor Beach, it was excavated by the Wisconsin Historical Society, together with local neighbors, a team of divers, and a bunch of enthusiastic history buffs. According to the Historical Society, the canoe was most likely built around the year 850. It's the only one of its kind still fully intact and is an absolutely unprecedented discovery as claimed by archaeologist Amy Rosebro. It was interestingly found by a diver testing scuba equipment totally by accident. They came across the canoe 30 feet beneath the water. As for who built the amazing artifact, it was most likely one of the ancestors of the Ho-Chunk Nation Native Americans. However, historians are still working with local tribes to figure out how it was built and how it ended up at the bottom of the lake. The USS Spiegel Grove The USS Spiegel Grove launched on November 10, 1955. She was a Thomaston-class dock landing ship who mainly participated in training exercises. She did a tour in the Mediterranean with the 6th Fleet, operating along the eastern seaboard, and transported army troops here and there around the world. She also did a goodwill tour to the African coast, but really never engaged in any kind of action. In 1989, the vessel was transferred to the Mothball Fleet, and 10 years later, it was given to Florida, and they sank it. Florida didn't sink it accidentally, but chose to turn it into an artificial reef. It went down off the coast of Florida on May 17, 2002, and that was when the horror started. There was a string of deaths surrounding the sunken ship starting just a year after it was sunk on purpose. In April of 2003, Eunice LaSala died after diving Spiegel Grove, and in April of 2005, Tariq Kerr Eldin passed away after diving in the area as well. 
The same thing happened in 2006 to David Hargis and then to a group of three divers in March of 2007 who all reportedly drowned. And the deaths go on and on, making this haunted landing ship one of the most dangerous places to go diving in America. Cleopatra's Underwater Palace In the 5th century AD, Alexandria, Egypt ran into a bit of a problem. A series of tidal waves and earthquakes hit the coast, destroying almost everything. The royal grounds, made up of great palaces, huge temples, shipyards, markets, and homes were completely lost. What was once a bustling part of the greatest city in the world was now under the water. Among the royal grounds was Cleopatra's palace. The royal palace was once at the very edge of the city on low islands sticking out from the bay and slowly crumbled into the bay over the years. Eventually, Cleopatra's palace was 20 feet below the surface. The artifacts and lost buildings have slowly been covered in the sediment of the sea floor. Modern Alexandria rose over the old Alexandria, and the royal quarters were buried for 16 centuries. It wasn't until recently that a famous underwater explorer by the name of Frank Gaudio began to reveal the secrets of this underwater world. From 1992 until today, Frank and his team have been busy pulling out some of the most unbelievable artifacts from the ancient Egyptian world. Somehow, in the murky, turbulent waters, Frank and his team managed to find the remains of Cleopatra's palace along with statues from a temple. The divers have retrieved almost perfectly preserved sphinxes which acted as spiritual guardians. They have found columns and pillars the massive stone gateway that led to the island where the palace once was, and even a granite head that is possibly Emperor Augustus. All kinds of artifacts have been pulled up from the sea, but more of it is still waiting beneath the waves to be salvaged. There is so much rubble from the old city of Alexandria that Egypt is now working on creating an underwater museum. It will be easier to bring tourists underwater than it would be to recover all the pieces of the destroyed ancient city. The Cave of Disfigurement In a submerged cave in Mexico, archaeologists recently discovered the skeleton of a woman who had been horribly disfigured when she died 9,900 years ago. Underwater archaeologists came across her spooky grave on the Yucatan Peninsula and have since identified the woman as one of the earliest known inhabitants of Mexico. Even more shocking than her age was the state of her skull. Scientists could easily tell that she had suffered at least three major injuries. Something hit her extremely hard, breaking her skull in multiple places. She also suffered from crater-like deformations all over her head, like the dents on the moon. Researchers believe these dents may have been caused by an extremely primitive case of bacterial infection related to syphilis. This woman clearly had a very difficult life, and according to lead researcher Wolfgang Stinnesbeck, her life had ended in absolute misery. He believes that the woman was expelled from her tribal group for an unknown reason, perhaps because she was deformed. After she was expelled, she was then followed to the cave where she had taken up residence and brutally murdered. That's all just speculation, but it seems to fit with the archaeological evidence. The cave was eventually flooded, and almost 10,000 years later, a diver discovered her bones and brought them to the surface. The Head from the Antikythera Shipwreck If you're into ancient archaeology and unsolved mysteries, maybe you've heard of the Antikythera Mechanism, the oldest computer known to humans. It was found in the ruins of a shipwreck from 2,000 years ago at the bottom of the Mediterranean Sea. The mechanism is currently the oldest analog computer ever found, but it's pretty old news by now. The mechanism was found over a century ago, but just recently something very different was discovered at the exact same shipwreck. Researchers recently surveyed an entirely new section of the shipwreck. They didn't find any pieces of old supercomputers, but they did find the busted head of Hercules. It happened in 2022, over 120 years since the mechanism was discovered. Researchers uncovered the giant marble head of the mythological Greek hero and brought it back to the surface. Even more miraculous is that researchers say the head most likely belongs on the top of a headless statue which was brought to the surface by sponge divers in the year 1900. 
when all is said and done, there will be a larger-than-life statue of Hercules brought up from the Antikythera shipwreck. And on a slightly different note, the divers also discovered some human teeth inside the wreckage. They are hoping that by extracting DNA from the teeth, they'll be able to see exactly who the sailors were and what part of the world they came from. Sadly, we now have to wait until 2025, when the researchers from the University of Geneva will return to the ship for their next expedition. They believe that next time, they'll find even more mysterious secrets hidden underwater. Ancient Hunting Bow An ancient hunting bow nearly 500 years old was just found underwater in Alaska. Archaeologists are currently working to understand more about this fantastic artifact, which was found in Lake Clark National Park. It was an employee with the National Park Service that made the discovery way out in the backcountry. Two feet underwater, the employee noticed a rather peculiar-looking stick. That stick turned out to be a wooden hunting bow, about 54 inches long, still totally intact. It was in such good shape that someone who knew what they were doing could have picked it up, restrung it, and used it in their next hunt. This ancient weapon is roughly 460 years old. It could have been built as far back as 1506. But what's really mysterious is that nobody knows where it came from. The antique weapon was discovered on Dena Ina lands, which once belonged to an indigenous group who lived all across Alaska. The weird part is that the bow doesn't appear to match Dena Ina craftsmanship. Experts believe the bow actually came from the Alutik people or the Yup'ik people. What they're trying to figure out now is how a bow crafted by a group of people who lived in a totally different part of North America wound up at the bottom of an Alaskan lake. Roman Amphorae A dive conducted off the coast of Italy in 2018 revealed some fascinating ancient wine vessels. European researchers brought jars from the days of the Roman Empire that had been used to hold the precious elixir of wine back to the surface. These jars date back to the 2nd century BC and are known as amphorae. This is the name for the double-handled jars used in ancient days to hold everything from olive oil to wine. Three different vessels were discovered under the water, one with a high and thin neck from the 2nd century, another with a larger and rounder body from the 1st century, and a third that was found to contain pine resin coating. It's the pine resin coating that made the discovery so exciting. Initial analysis showed that the Romans used wood tar to waterproof the inside of their wine containers, as it was better for storing both red and white wine. The researchers then looked at the wine itself, matching pollen and plant tissue with wine still made in Italy today. Even after 2,000 years, almost nothing has changed in the world of Italian fine wines. These containers were found at the location of what archaeologists believe to be a submerged Roman port. This place has no name, but was likely the production site for the amphorae, artifacts of the Titanic. On the fateful evening of April 14, 1912, the Titanic hit an iceberg and sank. The unsinkable vessel that took 14,000 people to build and 900 crew members to run was lost beneath the waves. And there it sat undisturbed by human hands 13,000 feet underwater. It lay dormant until it was discovered on September 1, 1985, by Navy officer Robert D. Ballard. All these years later, thousands of artifacts have been recovered from the ship. So many it would take hours just to discuss them. But not long ago, an exhibition was set up at the Luxor Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas, displaying roughly 250 very particular items. Each of these items was retrieved from the Titanic's underwater grave. Paper money found at the bottom of the sea was recently added to the collection. A pen still in its original box, and even a wooden brush. These are random personal belongings that were brought all the way from the bottom of the ocean near Newfoundland to a casino in the desert. The Luxor even houses what's called the Big Piece, the largest recovered part of the Titanic ever. It takes up its own room and is a 15-ton, 26-foot-long, 12-foot-wide chunk of metal from the Titanic's hull on the starboard side. Two sunken ships Off the coast of Caesarea, Israel, marine archaeologists have discovered a small group of ancient artifacts. Some of these artifacts date back to the 3rd century, and all of them came from the wrecks of two ships that went down in two separate periods. One of the ships was from the Roman period, 
the other from the Mamluk period. Researchers believe the ships were anchored and then hit by a storm, and all their treasures were spilled in the ocean. Since they were destroyed at the same place, this must have been a notoriously dangerous spot for sailors to anchor. There wasn't exactly a monumental treasure of gold and silver and gems. However, there were some extremely intriguing finds that were probably people's personal belongings. Archaeologists found a thick gold ring with a green gemstone embedded in the center. The gemstone depicts a shepherd boy dressed in a tunic and could be the symbol of the Good Shepherd. It was one of the earliest depictions of Jesus as a benevolent figure, which is most definitely the most remarkable find between the two ships. The divers also discovered hundreds of silver and bronze Roman coins and a small hoard of coins from the Mamluk period. The Gold Coin Nick Amelio was busy treasure salvaging south of Turtle Trail Beach when he came across something unbelievable. The teenager, only 17 years old, was in the water looking through sandy potholes when he found a remarkable treasure. He was only in about 10 feet of water, no more than 1,500 feet from shore, when he saw that old familiar glimmer of gold. He reached down into the sand and pulled up a gold coin worth about $10,000. If he could have traded that for cash, it would have been the quickest $10,000 anyone has ever made. The coin proved to be from the 1715 fleet. That was a group of 11 Spanish ships that got caught in a hurricane and sank, spilling a truly massive treasure into the ocean. The treasure has since dispersed because of hundreds of years of shifting sands and ocean currents. But every now and then, a piece gets close enough to the beach in Florida for a teenager to pick it out of the sand. Junk in the River Thames A mudlarker is a person who sifts through the mud of riverbeds looking for treasure. It's not officially a real word, but it is what these people call themselves, and it sounds fun. They go out at low tide, come through the muddy shoreline of whichever river they're interested in searching, and look for buried treasure and ancient artifacts. One of these mudlarkers is author and expert Lara Maklem. Lara has discovered lots of interesting historical artifacts from looking through the mud of the River Thames in England. It's actually from London that the term mudlarker was born. In the 18th century, poor people would trudge along the shoreline collecting any kind of valuables they could find. Anything from dirty old nails to a piece of coal, whatever they could sell for food. The river grew to be so polluted in the 19th century that by the 1950s it was considered dead. It wasn't until just recently that the river was cleaned up and is now considered one of the cleanest in the world. Still, London's filthy history can be found washed up on the shoreline. Mudlarkers like Lara have discovered all kinds of things here, like Roman pottery, a tobacco pipe from the 1650s, a preserved wax seal from the days of King Richard III, and so much more. Blackbeard's Treasure The Queen Anne's Revenge is currently occupied by octopuses and hungry sharks. Black sea bass, moray eels, and other fascinating marine creatures live in what was once the pirate Blackbeard's flagship. It's been sitting off the coast of North Carolina in relatively shallow water for almost 300 years. It was originally found in 1996, less than half a mile from the shore. But because of brutal South Carolina weather, a lack of funding, and an unexplainable lack of interest, not much has been done in the way of excavations. It was only a few years ago that archaeologists were able to actually confirm beyond any shadow of a doubt that this was Blackbeard's ship. Several artifacts have been brought up from the Queen Anne's Revenge since it was first discovered, but no actual treasure. When it comes to gold, underwater divers have found nothing except a small sprinkling of gold dust under an ounce. No actual treasure has been uncovered, and it's really making people wonder if there is any treasure down there to be looking for. Other than the small amount of gold dust brought to the surface, researchers have pulled up cannons encrusted with barnacles. They are currently working to bring the entire ship out of the water so that it can be restored and put in a museum. Thanks for watching! What would you do with pirate treasure? Let me know in the comments below and be sure to subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye!